So today I'm installing my Nissan Leaf EV battery uh, into my electrical system here for my workshop. And uh, all the electrical is pretty much done in this workshop. We finished it yesterday. So lights are on, these are LED lights. A pretty high output at 100,000 lumens a piece. So that works, garage door openers work. I gotta put some light bulbs in them uh, today. And uh, this is my solar setup as it sits right now. Regular electrical panel, you know, just basic electrical here in this workshop. And then I had some leftover parts sitting around um, from a previous project. So this is a 12 volt uh, multi plus two from Victron. It's a 3000 watt inverter and charger. So the generator, I currently have a generator running. So the generator is coming in uh, into the input and then the AC output is just going into the, the panel here. And uh, I'm gonna hook up a battery to it. So these are the battery terminals, positive and negative. And I'm gonna run this today, put a battery here. Uh, here's my solar charge controller. I need some longer wires and uh, run them nicely to these battery terminals. So that's, uh, that's the plan for today. I'm super excited about this setup. It is really well done. Uh, you know, some of the details here, so I spec outlets on each wall and I spec double outlets and Northwoods Cabin Company put in quadruple outlets. You know, it's, it's one of these things. Same with the garage door openers. Uh, I ended up getting some smart setup here. I don't even know what all these functions are, but it's the latest and greatest. Plus I have a keypad on the outside on both of these doors. I didn't even spec it, so it's all done. Uh, the other thing is, this is the uh, long wall. This is 44 feet here. And I spec two outlets out here. And uh, you know, the electrician decided, it's like, you know what, this is such a long wall two outlets is not enough, so they ended up just dropping a third outlet in here. You know, really well done. Uh, if, uh, what do I have here? Yeah, one outlet over here for a workbench, a light over the workbench, over these skylights here. So really cool. The other thing we did is uh, for the generator hookup, uh, all my cabins out this way. So I wanted the noise, if I ever run a generator, I wanted the noise to be you know, away from the cabins. So we spec the generator hookup on the opposite side here. And let me show you what that looks like. I just have a little Honda E1000 running right now. Here we go. So all the sound and all the noise is going into the woods here, so it's away from my cabin, so it doesn't bother me if I ever run it. Like today, because I don't have the battery connected to it, so I just run the generator just to show you guys what this looks like. And uh, the generator cable is a, I think it's a 25 amp cable, single phase. And uh, it's the same cable that I can use on my other cabin. So I can basically carry the generator and the cable over there, plug it in and it's all plug and play. Okay, so this is a battery here. You may have seen this in one of my previous videos. So these are Nissan Leaf cells for the, uh, from the first generation Nissan Leaf. And it's a, what is this? A five um, kilowatt hour design capacity. Uh, it tested at 72%. So what is that, uh, 5, 36, 3.6 kilowatt hours remaining. And it's a 16, 16 16.4 volt battery. Uh, The Victron inverter manages up to 17 volts, so I can use this. It looks a little crazy because I have two BMSs on it. I have a small BMS on it for charging devices. And then I have a 200 amp BMS on it because I do need 200 amp um, service into my inverter because it's a 3000 watt inverter, right? Divided by 16 volts, so that's about 200 amps. Uh, That's the disadvantage of 12 volt systems. I do not recommend putting a 12 volt system into anything, really. Uh, Again, this is left over from a previous project, so I had it laying around. Uh, If if I had to put a system into any structure today, 
it would definitely be a 48 volt system and servo rack batteries and uh, these same inverters come in 24 volts and 48 volts and uh, the wires are much thinner they are actually cheaper lighter weight and it's just a better solution for it so let me put this battery in here so something else I wanted to show you here so solar components need to be mounted on a non-combustible surface so you should never mount these solar components directly to plywood uh, because of fire hazard so what I do is I buy these cement boards and these are just uh, I don't know what is this half an inch or something like that cement boards they are relatively inexpensive and uh, I just worked around this electrical box and then I just painted it you know just put some architectural paint on it whatever you have laying around and that makes for a nice non combustible surface uh, same for the battery so the battery also uh, I don't want to put it directly onto the concrete because it acts as a heat sink and especially in the winter time it pulls you know there's a lot of cold going into the battery and as you know you cannot charge lithium batteries below freezing so all this is managed through a temperature sensor here and uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in another video but the battery is off the ground so I built this little wooden platform out of scrap wood and then again I had a piece of this uh, cement board left over and I didn't even paint it it looks good enough so I'm gonna set the battery on here so that also the battery is sitting on a non combustible surface yeah these cells are really heavy and again the wiring looks a little weird because I have two BMS's on it but uh, you know the the leads need to be exactly the same length otherwise you have voltage differences uh, in between the cells that, that don't really exist so uh, this is a technically sound solution it just doesn't look very good so I think I'm gonna use conduit I have some uh, four gauge wire which is borderline too thin for 200 amps I should probably use art or double art uh, wire I don't have any so I ran this before and I, I pulled 180 amps through it it was fine nothing was getting hot so I'm gonna use that so let me show you what I'm doing here so I have my 4 gauge wire loosely hooked up to the inverter here and uh, the length is roughly determined to go to the battery I have to go through this BMS and it's not gonna be a good solution I'm gonna temporarily mount it here and then you know hook it up uh, it also needs to be on a non-combustible surface, but I can't get it high enough. So I got to have another piece of cement board right here. So the other thing I'm doing right now, since it's such a small system, I want to hook up my charge controller directly to the battery. So I have some 8 gauge, 8 gauge wires set up. So I'm going to go directly to these lugs with the charge controller. There's no fuse necessary or anything like that so you can go really directly into it and gonna route the wires through here and run it right into the charge controller so I think it's gonna be pretty slick so let me show you where I am with the installation here so I ran the main battery terminals uh, to these lugs right here and I added the charge controller wires to it so they go to the charge controller which is currently not hooked up because I don't have solar panels yet. I'm running three quarter inch conduit to get the uh, four gauge wire down to the battery. And I did have to use wire loop to get uh, this wire through it. So it comes out at here at the bottom. I got the positive terminal connected to the positive bus bar of the battery. I checked the battery is sitting at 15.9 volts now before you hook up your negative terminal here you want to use a pre-charge resistor and I'm gonna leave links in the description for you to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter because the inverter has pretty large capacitors and if you just hook it up there's a big spark and all the current runs into these capacitors and it could potentially damage the capacitors I did it once or twice before now I'm using the pre-charge resistor so all you do is just hook it up 
and let the pre-charge resistor resist. I'm measuring the amperage on the other side and just uh, give it about, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so. Here we go. And uh, looks like I'm drawing half an amp, which is probably good. And about after 30 seconds or so, the uh, capacitor should be charged enough that I can hook up the main negative uh, to the BMS here. Uh, the BMS leads, uh, balancing leads are plugged in. Actually, I should probably see if I have voltage here. Okay, that should do it. Let me just see real quick. I'm pretty sure I have voltage on this guy. Come here. Yeah, 15.8 volts. Okay, good. So it should not spark on me. Uh, there's still a spark. Uh, it's, it's a lot less than it could have been, but you, you see that there is still a spark. So probably maybe 40 seconds or, or 60 seconds on this pre-charge resistor, you know, to get these uh, capacitors fully charged. Let me hook this up here. Okay, so I'm not too proud of this connection. It is electrically sound. Uh, if I had to do it for a customer, I would of course uh, put bus bars here and run it nicely through bus bars. So I think this battery is hooked up. Let's see. So I think we're good. Let me see if I can turn the inverter on, see what's happening here. All right, inverter is on. Let's see if the lights turn on. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, lights turn on. Love it. Yeah, inverter works. Uh, the battery hasn't been charged in over a year, but again, it's lithium, so you really don't have to charge them like ever. <laughs> Let me see what the amperage is I'm drawing currently. Yeah, 25 amps. So right now I'm drawing 25 amps, which is fine. Uh, 25, 16, 250, uh, 400 watts, right? Something like that. 350, 400 watts. That's pretty slick. So, inverter runs. The other thing I can do now is I can run my generator and see if the battery charger works. And if I remember correctly, I limit the battery charger to the low setting because my inverter is only a thousand watts and it barely has enough power to charge this battery at this setting. One of these days I gotta get a 2000 watt in, uh, generator. Let me fire this thing up. So there's a time delay before the inverter over here recognizes that the generator is running and we should hear it in the RPM change. Here we go. Okay, bulk charging. So now my battery is charging. I'm seeing nine amps going into the battery minus whatever I'm using. Let me turn the lights off, it should go up. Yeah, nine. 9.8 amps, 10 amps. Okay, it's still ramping up. So currently the battery is being charged with 10 amps. It's still ramping up. So it, it'll go up. Turn the lights back on. Yeah, it's working. So I can put the cover back on. And at some point, I gotta get my solar panels out here. You know, this is a pole. You've probably seen it. I have a Tamarack um, two panel mount for it and uh, here's a crossbar. This is a three inch pipe, 78 inches long. This is a four inch schedule 40 pipe. So that'll be another video. All right, everything runs. I have power in my workshop. Battery is charging with my little generator. And uh, that's all I have for you today. And I'll see you guys on the next one.